Hey everyone, welcome back to the Contractor Growth Network Podcast. I'm Logan Schinholster, and today I'm joined by Sean Holleran, who does all of our social media here at CGN and our clients' social media as well. We're talking all things about what should you be doing at your next job site from a marketing standpoint to take that one job and promote it so you get more jobs down the line. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the episode. Don, why are you excited to talk about this? Well, uh, like you said, it's my whole job, so it's what I do all day. Um, I love uh, you know, social media in general and creating content for that. Um, so it's really important to you know do a lot of this stuff uh, you know from job to job to uh, you know get your next job essentially. And one of the things, so the whole reason why we're doing this uh, topic, we really like segmented out what topics for podcasts do we want to do in what order. And right now, at the time of this recording, we are in like the thick of the season. It's near the end of July. It's hot. All of the excitement from the beginning of the year, which is I want to have a killer year. I'm going to do all the things I set out to do all the time, very consistently, it's starting to slowly fade away as it gets consistently hot and all those little marketing things that we told ourselves at the beginning of the year that we're going to do all the time, it's starting to slip. So unfortunately, what always happens is winter time comes and people go, hey, I got all this time. Now I should really gear up. But unfortunately, especially in the more aesthetically pleasing design build, remodeling, landscaping, even exterior remodeling side of things like you need footage and content and all these things from your projects to then use to create print mail, ads, better websites, all that stuff. And right now is the time to be capturing all that. But because we get busy in our day to day of like, you know, producing the job, dealing with everything, it's hard to stop, take a second and go, all right, this extra five minutes a day can really set me up for the remainder of this year and next. So this is a good, like, this is a very timely thing. It's focusing on the time that you probably don't want to be doing all this stuff, but you absolutely need to be doing it because in six months from now, if you're not doing this stuff, you're going to be kicking yourself going, damn, I, that was a really cool project that we did. I wish I had taken the time to go back and do it. Yeah, um, I know it's the busy season for a lot of our clients and contractors. A lot of people want to get their homes remodeled or their landscaping done in the summer when it's nice weather. Um, so it's hard to get that stuff. But it, like you said, it is crucial to get it done now because not only is it like, oh, I finished the job and I should have gotten stuff of that. But now you're talking it's November, it's December. And some places you're covered in snow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look as appealing. Um, and you can't use that in the following season to advertise for because what you want to do is you want to have a uh, you want your potential client to see this and imagine um, you know what they want their homes to look like when they're on breaks, which is summer. You know, mm -hmm. summer is the natural time for people to uh, be outside, enjoying their family time, and you know, summer vacation. You know, uh, so you want to have that show up in your advertisement. So in the summer during this time, you have to get that footage done now. I remember when I was doing all this for Premier Pond, which is the the pond company that my, you know, dad did, you know, had and is now sold it. But um, one of the issues was I, I was doing all the marketing from afar and they would produce this awesome pond and it looked super cool. The team was really happy with it. And what they would do is they would take photos when they were done with the project. Well in the pond world, it takes really a, you know, three to five days for a pond to be consistently running for all of the, the dirt, even if they clean it out correctly to finally settle and have clear water. Um, well, what would happen is they would get busy and then they would really just take a photo at the end or a video of the end and then go, here you go, Logan, do what you can. And what was happening was I was now getting all this footage of all these awesome ponds with brown water. And it was really hard for me to like, okay, do I post this and then create like an asterisk that says like, hey, trust me, in five days, this is going to look awesome. And eventually they start, you know, they hired an in-house person. Um, and now Mark does all that stuff. He goes back out and like all the photos and videos look great because it's like, let mother nature do its thing. But it's the same thing as what you're bringing up of like, if you're remodeling somebody's home, I mean, it's small, but like even like on the inside where you may not think weather is that 
impactful. Like people like to look tan. And if you're pale and you know, you, that sounds weird, but like you put on like your winter weight, like mm -hmm. there's a thing with that as well. So hitting it yeah. while it's the right time is huge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we have a client bulletproof, uh, ponds and they do one acre ponds and, um, sometimes those ponds, cause they have to fill naturally. They could take a year or two years to fill out. They still go back. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like that's important cause you know, it's a big difference to show that pond empty versus, you know, a pond full that someone can use. That is a huge difference to the marketing and, uh, like how to sell that pond. So it's the same thing. Like you have to set that up. Like you have to be dedicated to set that up because it's about how you look. Right. So if, your ponds look like they're covered in dirt and they're, you know, the water is dirty. I mean, how hard it's gonna be much more harder for your salesperson to sell that. Yeah. Um, and, and the last thing before I actually start to go through the tactics of how to do it. Um, we had a, uh, one of our clients came to us and said, look, I'm sure you guys work with a ton of different um, companies anywhere from their newer to their really well established, like what makes the people that are in my situation what makes it a really good scenario from a marketing perspective for them versus those that maybe they're not doing things the right way and the marketing doesn't work as well. And I remember I was thinking about this. I was like, well, that's a really good question. It really comes down to the more that you are your own biggest advocate and you are promoting your own stuff, the better off you're going to be from a marketing perspective. You've got the, the, the types of companies and, and owners that are like, it's like too bashful or reserved and they don't want to show off their own stuff. And what ends up happening is they don't look very confident and nobody really knows what they do. And it's almost like going into a job interview and having a resume that's very just conservative and humble. And they're like, well, why would we hire you? And you're like, I don't know. Like it versus like you like standing proud and saying, this is what I do. This is how I do it. This is why I want to do this thing. So like the more that you're your own biggest advocate, and it, there's an emotional aspect of this of like, once you start to promote yourself on social media and online, like at first it's hard because you're afraid of like, what are people going to think about me? But eventually you realize that like, nobody's actually judging you off of that. And we all agree that the people that are judging you off of that, you don't really care about what they think. So like, once you kind of, I don't know, like that first domino falls, at least that I have found like on my stuff of like, I used to be very hesitant to post about what I was doing on social. And it, it wasn't that I was, a, uh, you know, not confident in what I was doing, but nobody wants to be seen small. It's kind of like when you're losing weight, like nobody wants to put the before photos and say, Hey, I'm about to do all this stuff. They want to wait until they lost the weight and then say, Hey, by the way, I already did this. But when it comes to the business side, you need to be posting along the journey. Yeah. I'd say that's like one of the number one killers of people who are trying to promote themselves on social is that they're afraid, like they won't invite their friends or their family to their pages. And I mean, that is just free advertising. Yeah. And those are free people who are going to, um, you know, love your brand unconditionally almost. Yeah. Um, so that's like the first thing that I generally recommend to any of our clients is that uh, you have to put yourself out there to your friends and family and um, don't be afraid to post. Because like you said, people are not going to, they're not sitting there thinking like, oh, look at this guy. I mean, look at his work. It's terrible. They're not thinking that. Um, and if they are, it's just that they're jealous. Yeah. Uh, so, so you have to get over that. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's do it. Cause we have a whole thing on social. Let's start off with like the offline stuff. And the whole premise here is what you brought up, which is when you go to a job, you want the neighborhood to know and everybody else in the community to know that, Hey, this is what we're doing at this house. And it creates this, um, like neighborly effect of like, I mean, you know, like the the painting company that we ended up going with at my house, like they were just painting one of our neighbor's houses. And I was like, oh, like they're already up the road. Let me just call them because I saw the yard sign. And then I started getting all their ads. So like, it's like that neighborly effect of like, well, they're already here. They know the neighborhood. It's easy. So let me just like do first crack at that. So that's the whole goal here is to show up to the neighborhood and everybody knows your company is now potentially the painting company, the remodeling company, the home building or the landscaping company for that neighborhood. So the first tactic, if you will, that when you show up to a, a at the next job site, make sure you're putting out a yard sign very first thing in the yard. That is like the biggest, easiest thing 
the yard sign, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It really, it's just meant to be a brand piece because like you're going to have two different types of yard signs, if you will. You've got those that are like, you know, are you in an, this is going to get a little bit complicated, but like some people like to put a yard sign with tons of information on it. You know, these are the 14 services we do. This is our license. This is all of our stuff. And that not only does it look overdone, if people are driving by, how much of that are you going to see? No. So yeah, it so, needs to be memorable. Yeah. So it's yeah. really more of a branding play on the yard sign side. So it's really just when you show up, get the yard sign out there. And if you're one of these people that's like, well, we operate off of subs and are, you know, it's so hard to get our subs to do it. Well, like you can make that part of it. Or if it's, you know, that important, which it really is, get your butt out there to do it or have the project manager do it or somebody needs to do it. And mm -hmm. if you need to, because we've, we've dealt with this with clients before as well, we're like, oh, well, they don't do it. It's like, well, make it part of their job. But then also incentivize them. If, hey, if you put this yard sign out there, which you have to do anyway, because it literally takes five seconds and you're on the clock anyway, put that out there. And if somebody in the neighborhood calls us because of it, I will give you X amount of money from that project to, you know, so now it's like a win-win of the company gets more work in the door, but it's also that project manager, or whoever's owning this thing is actually doing it. So it's like super easy. Um, but you just got to do it. You got to put it out there, make it easy, make it a big branding play. And the yard sign, like you're going to have different levels depending on what uh, type of business you're in. If it's like very, like I tell people, like if it's just like if you're in and out of a project within like a week, you can have more of those like corrugated cardboard yard signs. But if you're like a remodeler or a home builder that's going to be there for months, like those things, those, you know, cardboard ones are going to look like crap after a couple weeks. They also, you know, they're on the cheaper side, which is fine if it's a cheaper product. And I'm not trying to like diminish somebody's product, but like, you know, there's a level of like how long you're there is also dictates kind of like the price points of stuff. So sure. like if you're a remodeler, like have a nice like wood sign that has like a light on it potentially that at nighttime people can see it. So like the way that your yard sign looks is like, yes, we want to be doing this at the very next jobs uh, site, but we also want to make sure that it's going to like give off the right, I don't know, vibe or mm -hmm. message or positioning of that company where it's not, hey, we do really expensive high-end stuff, but check out our really cheap temporary yard sign as a whole. Yeah, and you also have to think about if you're building an entire home, you're there for possibly months, and if you just go with those corrugated you know, foam boards, um, you know, you're going to be replacing that frequently and those aren't exactly cheap but they're not you know ex expensive but if you're going through one every couple of days or a week it's just not it's not as beneficial as just you know spending a little extra on a sign that you can put in pull out move to the next job yeah Something that lasts longer super easy um and then the next piece on that is once you have the yard sign out there which is like get that done just the very first thing because everybody is like all right we'll get set up at the house then we'll do it and then that becomes like it's day three and then you it's like that awkward like you, you haven't done it so far and now it feels weird to put it out there so just get it done the very first second when you get there and the next piece is door hangers so when it comes to door hangers what we're going for here is less of a hey buy our stuff so mm -hmm. when we do door hangers we want to put them up in the at the neighbor's houses um not on the uh, you know the house that we're actually working on, but it's the neighbor's houses, and it's really more of a pardon my dust type deal. It's a hey, we're gonna be at your neighbor's house. Um, if we're in the way, here's our website or our phone number. Just give us a call and let us know, and we'll move our vehicles out of the way. And I'm thinking about this like at my house, like I live in a community where it's it's tight between that the I mean you've seen my house it's not it's very small there's yeah. not a great parking spot no there's not a great parking yeah. spot so it's like when they were I mean we just finished I mean my brother just did a whole um like water feature and walkway and everything and like and he has machines in there and the subs are so it's a lot of stuff so it's like you know I'm watching our neighbors like have to squeeze through these two trucks like on either side of the road and having just a yard a, 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 a door hanger that just says like hey if we're in the way just like let me know like that's just such a good customer service move that yes, they will, you know, people will hold on to these things if they're even remotely interested in it, um, whatever the service is. Um, I remember my neighbor, um, one of my neighbors, when my brother first did something at my house like two years ago, they like a year later, they just like held on to that door hanger and we were like over there playing games at their house and they're like, oh, hold on. And they went and got the door hanger and showed us that they like held on to it. And it's in like that kitchen junk drawer of theirs that like, 
and you keep yeah. looking at it. So there's no reason not to put these things out. And if you're putting it out in a way that it's like, hey, if we're in the way, please let us know. It's not this, you know, yeah, every so often you're going to have one person that's like, hey, that was solicitation. Why'd you do it? And you're like, no, this is like a customer service thing. And then all they do is they call you. But that is worth it to get your brand out there in the rest of the neighborhood a lot more. Plus, if you really want to take this thing up to the next notch, just attach a gift card to it for like Starbucks. Like just have a coffee on us, make it 10 bucks. And this is like, I'm a big like gifting person. And if you're going to give them a Starbucks thing, like it's, you can't really get much for five. So if you're going to pass them out, I would say it's have a, a gesture though. Yeah. You know? Like I remember I did this one time just on a side note. Like I was, I got, um, actually it was my dad's company back, um, uh, years ago. I got them like hockey tickets to the caps game. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was going to get them tickets in the last minute. I was like, hold on. These are like nosebleeds. Like, you don't want to get them a gift where it's almost like, hey, I appreciate that. But like, this was just such like a, a check the box gift, which is like why I'm not, a, it's, it sounds odd. Like I'm not, I, that's why I don't want like a $5 gift card at Starbucks. Cause like you can get a coffee, but then you have to spend like a little bit more. And it's just like, hey, I'm giving you this gift, but you still got to spend your own money. It's kind of like a halfway thing. So I would make it 10 bucks, get the five closest houses um, to it, attach it. And then now then the, homeowner that you're actually working at their neighbors i mean first off they, their neighbors will never experience somebody else giving them money to say hey if we're in the way please let us know that's going to make your client look really smart mm -hmm. for hiring the right type of company um but it's also just a good gesture where they're going to remember that and i remember for my dad's company we actually had um their logos um printed on the starbucks gift cards so you could actually attach it that had like um their logo on the card itself, and it came like in a little uh, mini envelope that just had, again, hey, if we're in the way, please let us know that they attached to that door hanger, and it was like beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I remember I had a tree that had to have an arborist come out, and um, about a year later, my neighbor asked me who came out, and I you know, recommended them. They sent me a mug, a coffee mug, and I had no idea they were going to do this, but I use that mug every time, and anytime I'm thinking about trees, they're the first ones I think about. Yeah. Like every time I see that mug, I mean, uh, they're the only the only people I call about trees now. Yeah, and then they're in South Carolina, so they're they're not that they're not close. Yeah, you know, but, but, but you know. it's huge. It's yeah. huge, right? Yeah, smallest gesture. It was just a coffee mug. I love coffee, um, and all I did was recommended somebody to them. So yeah, small gestures like that go a long way. All right, last uh, just offline marketing tactic is going to be if you have your truck and it's wrapped, make sure that you know if you're parking it all the way up the driveway because it's. I don't know, like if it's convenient, that makes sense. But like, if you're going to park it on the road, like just make sure that it's parked in a place that people can actually see the the actual truck wrap as well. Like you don't want to keep that thing hidden from everybody. So if you're able to park it on the road in a way that it's off to the side, that people are not going to like, I don't know, get frustrated by it, just do it. It's another just branding piece as well. Plus if they see the truck at the house, and then if that happens to be an area that you do a lot of work in, people are gonna be consistently seeing your truck all over town. And kind of like that mug example, it's, oh, I've seen that truck. They did something at my neighbor's house, and now they're just seeing it all over town. And it just kind of continues to build that brand recognition. So super easy. So between yard sign, door hanger, and that truck, um, super quick things just to do at the very next job that you're working on. Yeah. Now, flipping over, let's talk about on the online stuff. So Sean, this is more of your realm. So let's talk through when it comes to like, maybe capturing media at the next project, like walk us through what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, so this is also equally as huge. Um, so probably more would be my guess. Yeah, it could, I, I think you can argue both sides, but yeah, definitely. Uh, me being who I am, I'm going to say, it is yeah. um, with marketing, uh, organic marketing being free. Um, and there's so many voices out there. It has to be good. It has to be consistent. Um, so a big thing is like before and after photos and videos, they're huge. Um, especially on Instagram, like reels, people love just watching like the transformation of things. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that you're grabbing, you know, the four photos. And, and I'm not talking like I see a lot of contractors are getting like current I want to see what it looked like before, grab the current, and then grab the after as well. Um, so those those are huge. And then you want to get things like client testimonials on video. Um, now, this could be in an ideal world. You have a videographer that's coming in and doing all this stuff, but um, not everyone's always there. So uh, if you're not a videographer, you can do it yourself. 
Uh, everyone's got a phone in their pocket. Uh, you can get microphones that plug directly into your phone. That gives you good audio qu uh, quality, and that's huge too because um, people are going to swipe away very quickly if your audio is not great. So uh, you want to make sure that invest just a little bit in a microphone and uh, you know plug that into your your phone. But you can be walking through your projects. Uh, giving updates, you know, weekly maybe or daily, depending on the job, and posting those to your Instagrams, your your Facebook, TikTok, wherever you you want to you know build your following. Um, so let's go back to the, the before and after photos because like, yeah, I think that's yeah. like especially in like the remodeling landscape, design build, anything that's like aesthetically pleasing, like that to me is like bare minimum because if if that's if if you are a fitness trainer and you're trying to sell this fitness program, hey, come you know, come work with, you know, body by Logan. Um, and I'll get you squared away. And, and then if Sean, like, what's like, you're going to want to know, Hey, have you ever done this before? And I go, yeah, trust me. I can show you the during of one person working out, but you don't, you don't know were they obese beforehand. Were they morbidly obese? Right. You know, or was it like in reality, they were, they were skinny. And now when, after they worked out with me, now they're jacked because depending on if you're trying to lose weight or gain weight, like that's going to make a big difference. So Going back to like the before, the during, and the after shot, what kind of shots do you want to be taking that would show the transformation or like the, the actual like project itself? So it, I think it depends a lot on the project, but um, we try to get, you know, the whole room, like you want to get a wide shot, then you want to get some close up. So essentially you want the wide shot so you can see the overall of the, the scope of the project. Um, and we say wide shot, is that like, like what they do, like real estate photography, where it's just like staying in the corner and just take the whole yeah. room? Um, generally everyone's phone, like if you have an iPhone, even, you know, Pixel or Android, you have that feature that's a 0.5 or 0.6 that really widens, whoops, really widens the, the, the camera. Um, so you want to do something like that so you can – because a lot of rooms like bathrooms could be really small yeah. and they're tough to get into. And so if you do have like a professional videographer or somebody coming in, um, you want to make sure that they have a lens that can capture that um, because especially on social media, you have to fit it into a portrait – landscape or a portrait, uh, mode. Like, like, is that vert like vertical? vertical right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a vertical. And when you do that in a, uh, like something that's not able to capture wide angle, you lose a lot of details. You're actually punched in a lot. You're zoomed in a lot. So, uh, you want to try to get as wide as, as possible. If you need to be in the corner, get in the corner. Um, you can do a lot of top down. So you, you're looking from the top pointed down and you get to a lot more surface area. Uh, but it all depends on the job itself. But you want to begin in the corner getting wide. And then you want to get some close-ups of like the faucets. That's a huge one. People are always looking at, you know, faucets and sinks and um, bathtubs. Uh, so uh, they want to see essentially what did it look like before and then what did you do to make it better? Because like you were saying, uh, when you have a uh, bodybuilder, uh, did they actually make it worse afterwards? You need to know that you need that reference point. So, um, close-ups of the you know the faucets, uh, the the handles on your cabinets are great, um, and make sure that you're staging it too. Uh, it's okay to see like an empty bathroom, like it's just done. But what really sells it is people like we're talking about with the like getting the photos and the videos in the summertime. People want to think of themselves using that space. So no one's going to have a bathroom that was just moved into um, that has nothing there. They're going to their bathroom's going to have like a washcloth on it. It's going to have some soap dispensers and make it look nice. Maybe some some greenery in there. All of that like staging is very important to sell the shot and really just bring that extra aesthetic. So when you're doing these shots, like the befores and afters, and then we'll get to the durings, but the befores and afters, how important is having the same shot of the before and the after to show like, cause I've seen it sometimes where people will have like, you know, they're staying in one corner to take the before and then the after is taken from a completely different yeah. angle. Like, is that a, an important thing? I think it is. I don't think like if you end up knocking it that way, it's not the end of the world, but I know when I'm given footage like that, I've never been in the space. It's tough for me to edit a piece like, because especially some some of our re, uh, remodelers, they move walls, they readjust things. So like I don't know that space, and it's tough to visualize that change if you're in a different angle. So my recommendation is try to get like match those shots as best you can. 
Because sometimes, like I said, if you move walls and stuff, maybe you can't get that shot. But get it as close as you can. Um, like a professional videographer, he would probably mark that and write down notes like, this is where I was. These are the the settings I had. Try to match it as best as possible. So with that, then, should you get a professional for before photos or is it really more for the after? Like, what It can't do? hurt to have both. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people, like their clients, they struggle with, I don't want a prof- I don't want a photographer coming in on my before. I'm hiring you for a reason. I'm not proud of this space. Um, but if you can, get professional before, professional after. And then what about durings? How important are during shots for everything? They're not as important as the before and after. They help, though, especially if you want to uh, make your content last longer um, for the same project. Like I know some of our clients, they may do five, six projects in a year, especially like a home builder. Mm-hmm. Uh, they may not do a whole lot. And uh, that becomes tough when you are trying to fill an entire year's worth of content. Um, so it helps to you know lengthen how long you have on that content. So why 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 not just have standalone durings because that's what most companies do is they, mm-hmm. they don't have the befores the the afters are, are a lot of times unless they hire a professional to go back out there the afters are typically going to be like 90% of the way there but like none of the fixtures are in or you get it pretty close but there's you know paint cans in the corner like on the countertops and stuff so it just mm-hmm. it looks like it's still a construction zone why are durings not the shot to just only get I think it goes back to what we've been, this whole theme really is that people want to picture themselves in this space. And the during is great to be like, oh, I can, can kind of see your process. It's a little engaging. I know you can do the job, mm-hmm. but I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what, also like you were saying with the bodybuilder, uh, I don't know what that, like what the after is. I don't know what you actually did for him. Mm-hmm. So the during is good to see that, you know, proof of work, but I really want to be able to picture myself in the end. And I really want to know, what your finish looks like um because that's really important you know you can be doing the job and then at the end it actually doesn't look great you know yeah so okay so we want before and after photos hopefully with the same angle best case scenario hire a professional who knows how to um get the right lighting the right you know staging is a big part of it i know i talk to clients about the difference of like a real estate photographer versus um, one that's more interior design or architectural design focus where one is just wide angles to show you the space and one is going to be more close-ups on the finishes, the features, uh, really like that one, the, the interior design photographer is more about like the craftsmanship and they're like, cause I mean, we'll, we'll have like the clients that we work with that either we go out and do the photos and videos for, or they have somebody who's really good. You can, we can tell what type of photographer they used, or if they just went out there themselves with a you know what they deem to be a nice camera because you can tell with the lighting like i remember i was showing audrey um uh, a remodeler here in charlotte like their website when we were like looking at who we wanted to do for our project and she's like why are all the photos so dark and i was like well this is shot with a professional camera like you can tell that but like the shadowing was a big deal and like it just made the space look like dark and gloomy um, they did a good job with, they had staging there. You could see like the vacuum lines on the, on the carpet floor. Like the rest of it was good, but just like the lighting of it, like it, it just didn't look like an inviting room to be in. And what ended up happening was after seeing enough of those, that type of like photos, um, she was like, just not super excited about the project anymore. So it became a thing where I was like, no, no, no. I think it's just bad photos. Like, I think that they're, they're trying to make it look good, but just trust that they just didn't know what they were doing on the shadowing, which I guess if you always have like a marketing person as like the other person coaching the homeowner of like, hey, trust me, this looks a lot brighter in person, you're golden, but nobody just has like that devil and angel where like the angel is like the the marketing person on your shoulder going, trust me, it looks way better in person. So yeah, it's massive. I mean, especially this is a visual industry. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, there's an entire channel built on this stuff, right? Like massive. And it goes both ways. Like I remember when I was looking for homes in 2019 to buy, there were a lot. I mean, you look at photos, real estate photos, and there are a lot that I was like, oh, this one looks great. I'm going to go look at that one. And it will be like three in a day that I go to. I'm like, this is nothing what the photos showed. Mm -hmm. And it was because the photography was so good, it made it look way better than it actually was. Now, I'm not saying 
make your job look way better. Uh, you know, don't don't do a subpar job. But I'm just saying it's very important, like how those photos look. So if those photos are not professional, they look bad. Your great look, your great work, may not look great. Yeah. Yeah, and it tells a whole story about everything. So let's go back to the the, the video side of things. Sure. So I know you brought up um, testimonials from mm -hmm. clients. Walk me through, like, because I know we, we've kind of gone on a journey here at CGN of, like, we used to only do client testimonials mm -hmm. that was, like, very story brand-esque, which for those of you that don't know, story brand, it's a, it's a book by Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand, highly recommended. It essentially tells you how to tell the story of how you help consumers um, by really not... I mean, he talks about cutting through the noise, but instead of you going, hey, I'm the best remodeler out there, hire me, it's really more of like, hey, this is how I can help you. And we used to go very storytelling-esque, and now we've kind of re, you know, flipped it where you and um, you know, Aaron on one of the projects just said, sat down and just scripted out how HGTV does it, so now it's different. So you know, this would be best-case scenario to hire somebody to do this, but can you give me like the, the journey of, I guess, how it went from only client testimonials, because I've seen them where... We have, you know, clients of ours that are like, hey, I'll just do the testimonial. And it's just like, it looks all, it's, you know, you, they're trying, but it's the homeowner sitting down, the co contractor standing up, holding and sticking their phone in the person's face, trying to ask them these questions. And, and it never comes out the way that you want it to, because it seems like a hostage video. So can you walk through, I guess, what a good project walkthrough is in video form? Yeah, so essentially what we do now is uh, we call them uh, featured projects uh, videos that go on the featured project pages that we do. Um, and like you said, it's all based on kind of the idea of what HGTV will do. Uh, we used to do just testimonials and we used to do just project walkthroughs. And they were great. And what's the difference between those? Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the testimonial, essentially, we'd sit down the client of, of the contractor and they would tell their story about how they found them, what the jobs they got done, and, you know, just what they loved about it and everything. And we'd show like B-roll videos of like what was done, uh, maybe some before photos as well, if, if they had them. And then a project walkthrough is the contractor actually going through the space and walking through the project of what was done and the challenges they got went over and uh, essentially just the overall scope of the work. Uh, so essentially what we found out is that separately, these are only – entertaining to a certain extent. Um, they're both very important to have because the testimonial is important to have because now you got proof of a client that is happy and everyone knows how uh, important reviews on like Google and Amazon, how important they are. So you need that. And the project walkthrough shows like your competence, like you you did this job and uh, you know here is the deeper level of what was done than what the client can say. So essentially we took these and kind of smashed them together and made a story out of it. Uh, and now what this does is it gives enough engaging information so that a somebody wants to stick around for a one minute or three minute to four minute video, which our attention spans are super short these days. Uh, so you got to capture them in that amount of time, uh, even less so with social media. Uh, so that's essentially where we've gone down that journey of finding that story of being able to have a client uh, lead us through their story with the contractor also telling their story about the job and the problems that they overcame for their clients. So all of this is like best case scenario, you can hire, you know, a company to come out and record all this because there's just like with, you know, if you're a remodeler, like a homeowner could technically, I guess, remodel their own kitchen, but the way that you're going to do, it's going to be better and, you know, more execution, but maybe not every company is at a place where they can afford a professional, videographer because there and there is a difference between like a lot of photographers will not do videography and vice versa because it is very different skill sets i have so many people who ask me can you do photography no 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 I'm, there's a difference there's, yeah, there's, there's a, way, there's big a difference. major difference yeah. now i will say we we will do like we do photography as right. well so like we we had to learn that side but like everybody yeah. like you dane aaron like all came in videography first yep. and then when we introduced the idea of photography that was like a whole new learned thing of like I mean, y'all went over to, to we, uh, I have a friend that's a really well, like run real estate company, but taught us staging and like yeah. what's important and like, you know, all that stuff. So like we had to learn it and now it's great, but you know, it, it's not the same thing of like, oh, you can, you can, you know, play basketball, which is like, you can technically like run on a court. Are you also good at running a marathon? And it's like, well, these are completely different. So same idea here. Right. All right. So now let's just 
say that you don't have this huge budget, right? And you have a, a phone, a, a, that microphone that you talked about that, you know, I know we use for a lot of stuff. Um, and you just have one person that's just walking around with, with your phone, potentially recording you or something else. Like, how do you do a project walkthrough or a testimonial in a way that still looks good and is not going to hurt your street cred or reputation, but you don't have to hire a full production company to come out and do it? Yeah, um, it's tough getting started. Once you get started and get into the rhythm of it, it's a lot easier than people think. And you just, uh, you know, get in front of the camera alone is really tough. But once you get over all that, you're sa- you're golden. You're golden. Um, but it's important you can get things like a, a gimbal. Uh, DJI makes really good gimbals. We love DJI here. Um, and you can get them for your phone. They're not expensive. But this allows you to get a smooth movement as someone's walking. Because if they're just holding your phone, you're getting a lot of bouncing up and downs for every step that you take in it. Um, it can be distracting. So essentially, you want to get a gimbal, use your phone, and then use your microphones that plug directly into your phone as well, because uh, that in, that video or that audio is very important. Um, so and just so gimbal is like a stabilizer that yeah you can use it for massive cameras. You can also use it for your phone, right? But it just smooths it out. So when you're walking, it's not bouncing. That's right. All the cameras. I mean, my iPhone now has like that action mode that like is meant to be a smoother video. Mm-hmm. The problem with the action mode, though, is some, depending on which action mode you go in, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's the same as an iPhone because I'm not an iPhone user, but um, on my phone, when you get into that super smooth mo- movement, it doesn't record audio. And it also records at a different frame rate. So your audio may, may not match up. So that is one issue with it. Um, but there are some that smooths out a little bit that does record audio. Okay, Still, so, I so would if you get, had a, a gimbal, not action yeah. mode, normal video, you'd be good. Oh, you'd be, yeah, okay. 100%. And then on the microphone side, how important is the audio if you're trying to talk into the camera? I would say it's, I mean, if we're going to do video and audio, I mean, they are equally as important, not one more than the other, um, because if you just have really bad audio and like every time you turn away from that camera, because that cam, that audio or that microphone is on the camera pointed at you and it's picking up all the sound in the area. So if you turn away from the, the microphone, your audio becomes muffled. People can't hear you. Um, and then if there's background noise going on or you're not in a great area, it's going to pick all that up. It's going to be distracting. Essentially, the video is pointless. So it is audio is just as important as video is. So what do you then, let's just say we, we're, 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 we have video and audio. What are we talking about? If you, it, you don't have the full production team, you're a remodeler, you just finished the kitchen, what are you walking through? Uh, so you generally want to walk through the scope of work that you've done, um, the problems that the client had, and how you overcame them. Those would be the big things. Uh, and then essentially just tell you, how, like, show what you did with your work. So what are you proud of? Uh, what did you put in? What stuff did you use? But mainly it's what were the problems that your client had and how did you overcome that problem? So how important in this is like you, when you're explaining it, like talk me about, I guess like the energy levels. Cause like we, we have mm-hmm. some people on camera that are super boisterous. And we have some people on camera that it's like, it's, you can tell they're very nervous. So like their energies are pretty low. Uh, well, I always tell people the same thing as, um, especially when you're doing this stuff, it is, it's about you know selling yourself. So you need to be who you are, first and foremost. Be as truthful to who you are as, as possible. But sometimes not everybody is great on camera, so you may have to fake it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, energy levels, you need to be proud of that work. Like you're going back in, going back in the early, earlier in this episode, you mentioned you need to be, have confidence because – who's going to love you if you don't love yourself. So you need to be confident of that work. Your energy level does need to be higher. You can't be uh, like mumbling and like, you know, this is my work. You know, you have to be excited about it, Um, but don't make it so that it's not who you are. So then you get these photos, you get these videos. What do you do with them? Well, first of all, uh, social media, that's huge. Um, You can also put them on your website as proof of work, uh, like feature project pages that we do. Uh, you know, you, it's essentially it's a case study of everything you've done, and it proves that you can do that work. Uh, and then finally, you can actually send them to prospects who are, uh, you know, interested in your work, but they're n- maybe not sold yet, uh, or even they've already been sold. And you want to show them here's what we've done for somebody else, and here's what you can expect. 
And I know like with the photos and videos, a lot of times, like even if you don't necessarily know what exactly to do with them now, like mm -hmm. it all, like you're never going to do a project that's cool. And then you capture media for it and then regret that you captured it. It's always the opposite where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish we had done better photos or done photos at all or videos at all on this one project, but we didn't. And then it's sometimes you feel awkward reaching back out to a customer from three years ago to go, hey, I know it's been three years since we talked. Mm -hmm. How's everything going? By the way, can we come back out and do, you know, photos and videos in your space? So it's much easier from just a, an emotional standpoint too, just to knock it out right then and there. Um, and even with like, if you're going to do the testimonials with clients, like a lot of times, just asking them before the project starts, hey, if we knock this thing out of the park, like we love doing video of, of projects, like would you be willing to leave us, you know, a testimonial or a review, which we'll talk about how to do reviews next, but just a, you know, a video testimonial. And then some clients will say yes, some clients will say no, but like if you do it ahead of time and you position it in like a, hey, if we knock it out of the park, would you be willing to do this? Like they're way more likely versus like springing it on them at the last minute of like, hey, you got a couple minutes, can I put you on camera real fast and like can freak them out? Yeah. I mean, people like to prepare. Uh, I mean, you, they got to know ahead of time. Uh, it, it also, it's not just an emotional thing. It's more, it's also a, um, aesthetic thing as we were talking about earlier, where, uh, we had a client, uh, who we went out to before and we were doing testimonials for them and we get halfway through the testimonial interview with their client. And it turned out that they had done the job seven years prior. And they had not spoken since, uh, other than her, him to ask, like, if she will do the video. And there are a lot of questions that we ask, like, well, so uh, what was your, you know, what was your experience like with this? And she's like, well, I don't really know. It was that long ago. So it's about <laughs> the information that they can provide if you wait too long. And the fact that once you get further down the line, aesthetically, it's now used. Yeah. Um, it's like design trends go in and out. It'd be like yeah. showing, like you know, your phone from seven years ago where I'm like, oh, like oh. that looks like an iPhone 13. Like yeah. why are they using that? So, yeah. cause the recency side of things is big for projects. We all want to see like the latest and greatest, which is piggybacking into one of the other things that we want to do on the next job is make sure we get a review, like a review on your Google business profile. Like these are huge. Google wants to see companies that are active and they're still doing the work. So the more reviews that we can get on a consistent basis, the better off we're going to be because not only do customers like it, because like, Sean, if you have two restaurants that you're deciding between, one of them, and they have the same amount of reviews, but one of them hasn't gotten a review in a year, which one are you going to go to? I mean, definitely the one that has the most recent reviews. Yeah, because they you want to see the latest yeah. and greatest and making sure that it's not like, well, what's going on that they haven't had anything in a year? But mm -hmm. Google also likes that because they want to see that you're active. So Honestly, when I'm looking at reviews, I do it by latest review. Yeah, you go newest. Like, like it's, yeah. It's it's default is overall. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want that. Because sometimes things change ownership. And I want to see what's, what's happened in the last three months is usually how long I go. Yeah. The last three months. Yeah. So get those reviews in. And there's, you know, there's softwares like we use Nice Job. We have clients that use Nice Job. And it's just a simple software that you just put the client's, you know, information into. And it will just gently follow up and say, hey, you know, can you please leave us a review? Here's a link, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So like on the, like with the reviews, just making sure that we're getting them, make it easy on people, use a software if we need to. Um, but even on those reviews, like I know you brought up like featured project pages, like, again, even if you're not doing these right now, those pages, it's, it's awesome to have like a, a page on your website dedicated to a project that has the video, the befores, the durings, the afters. And then at the bottom, it shows the review from the actual client. So it's tying it all together. It actually puts like a qualitative thing into was the client happy or not? So reviews are big. And I would say one of the last things, it's like this is a cool above and beyond. And it works really well if you're especially on like the uh, remodeling or landscaping side is have a party for your client. Like that's a new trend I'm seeing a lot of. And man, that sounds, it looks pretty awesome to be honest with you. I mean, I've we, never had one, but. We have clients that like they, like they finish a kitchen. They then um, throw a party for that, for their client. And then their friends come in. And typically you hang out with other people that are like you like my neighborhood is probably all similar price points of houses and demographic. I mean, everybody's pretty much like the same age ish. So it's like, we all value a lot of the same things and you don't want your neighbor's house to be the, 
new hot thing. Like, you want yours to look good, too. So if you're bringing everybody in for these events, like, that's huge because um, you'll have people that are, like, now in the space using whatever it is. And same thing with these, um, just like with the yard signs, like, you don't want it to be, like, hey, I'm going to throw you client a party where I'm going to... I'm going to come in with my team and we're just going to grill out and do hot dogs. Like you want it to be nice. So like, I know my wife, like my wife and I did about a year ago. Um, I hired like a private chef that comes into our house. She brings all the food. She then does like a cooking class for my wife and I, and we were asking her, we were like, do you typically just do this for couples? And she's like, yeah, but usually it's like a, a small dinner party. And like everybody gets involved. And when she came into our kitchen, she was like, wow, this is an awesome kitchen. Now, we didn't just redo the kitchen or anything. It was the same one that came with the house. But as soon as she said that, I was like, wow, like if this lady who was gregarious, she was fun, it was a good time, um, was going into a kitchen that had just been remodeled, she's definitely going to be like, wow, what a great kitchen. I'm essentially going to show you how to use this kitchen by cooking this meal with you guys. Like that is now a story that all the people that are now coming together to do are going to remember and they're going to remember the kitchen that they did it in. And now it's just like a matter of time before they're like, okay, by the way, who did this kitchen for you? And it's your name. So mm -hmm. especially on like the bigger projects, like you can do those things. Yeah. The, the client has to say yes to it, but like, I don't think a client should be like, no, we don't want that at all. Like do not do that at this house. Like it's easy. Hey, we'll, mm -hmm. you know, put a thousand bucks towards it. That'll pay for, if you want to do like the cooking class and the food, especially if it's like a couple hundred thousand dollar kitchen, like that is well worth mm -hmm. just quote unquote factoring that into the budget of it. And then now you're providing an awesome experience for the client and all their friends also who are in that same demographic are coming over to hang out and be like, and, and, and admire the thing you just spent a lot of money on, which I mean, let's face it, there's a level of status that's associated with remodeling. Mm -hmm. It's not just functionality. It's you you worked hard. You just put a bunch of money into making this thing look amazing. You want to show that thing off. And what better way than having, hey, our remodeling company is paying for this cooking experience for us. Everybody come on over. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, not only do you bring a chef in, you're bringing a photographer or a videographer as well. Because now you document it, and this is essentially PR for you. This yeah. is content for your social media, content for your website. And also, it's, it's a little piece of, like, you can have a video put together and given to those clients that they remember forever. They post on their social media. Their friends ask, who did this? You know, it is just a snowball. Yeah. And I would say, tr truth be told, because like, a lot of the stuff that we're saying is like, in a perfect world, we can do it all. Yeah. Just start small on all this stuff. Like, mm. work your way into it. If nothing else, get the yard sign. Get the door hangers out there. Uh, make sure you're capturing the before and after photos of everything. Um, getting a nice photographer is not super expensive right. um, for, for what that will do for the company as far as like being able to show off nice stuff and you can do it like literally like, even if you don't if you're on a project right now that you're like shoot i didn't have a professional come in and do the befores you still have befores or most likely the client still has like there's zillow photos that are, are up there from like the mls that like they can come in because at the end of the day the after is really the most important piece it no is the most what. important piece yes yeah you need both but the after is the most important piece so big takeaway here is just make sure you're self-promoting. You're always in this mindset of like, it's the little things, like all the stuff that we talked about, none of it by itself takes a very long time. Maybe if you were like gonna go out and hang out with the, the, the group at like the kitchen, you know, when it's done, that's a few hours, but like realistically to have a photographer go out, like that doesn't take long. I think getting it set up, like when you first start doing it, may it's, a, it's an extra step, right? But once you get it into like a rhythm of it, it's then it's just a natural thing you do and yeah. it doesn't take extra time yeah so bunch of stuff there's a bunch of other things that we could have gone through on like you know taking those photos and now turning into ads that you run around the neighborhood or like direct mail that shows befores and afters of what they did at their neighbor's house but like i would say those are all things that are like phase two if you will so do you have anything else to add i don't know i think we i mean we'll have to do a second one i yeah. think all right well let's master this first one yeah first do the little things offline, do the little things online and collectively with, like you said at the very beginning, like a big part of this is consistency. Mm -hmm. The more consistent that you get with it, because I think it's like the big thing that most people like, they do it one time and go, well, this didn't make me a bunch of money, yeah. what's up? Yeah. When in reality, it's like, you're, right now, it's just like going on a diet. You're not gonna drop a bunch of weight after day one, yeah. but if you do a good consistent diet and you're focused for the first 
three months is really just consistency. So with you, it's just the first either three months or three projects that you do. Just focus on just checking the boxes each time. And little by little, you'll get better and better and better. And next thing you know, it'll just be this big snowball effect. Yep, absolutely. Cool. All right, I'm super excited with that episode. I would say my biggest takeaway is just all the little baby things that when you do them consistently, at first it feels hard, then you realize that the compound effect is very real. And then once it all really becomes second nature, none of it takes a crazy amount of time, but now you have this beautiful flywheel of taking all this amazing stuff that you're doing in people's homes and showing everybody else in the neighborhood and the surrounding areas, this is what I do and this is what I can do for you as well. My suggestion to you is if you have somebody on your team that should be taking control of yard signs, door hangers, taking photos, go ahead, send this podcast to them so you're both listening to the same thing. That way you can game plan together. How do you actually implement these things into the business so you don't feel like you have to do it all on your own? Thank you so much for joining us this week on the Contractor Growth Network podcast. This episode of the Contractor Growth Network was hosted by Logan Schinholzer and produced by Dane Appleyard and Logan Schinholzer. Today's guest was Sean Holleran. We look forward to seeing you next time when we talk about the latest SEO practices in an AI content world with Stuart Hendry.